Dr. Christian's office. Oh, this is Judy. Why, Jim Racer. How are you, Mr. Newlywed? Happy? Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, well, how did that happen? And it's the Vaseline program, the only program in radio where the audience writes the show. Tonight, Cambridge, Massachusetts gets the honor, and the prize goes to James Boston of 25 Bigelow Street for his play, The Last Awakening, starring Gene Herschold as Dr. Christian with Rosemary DeCamp in the role of Judy Price. Well, next time you take a hot pan off the stove for your bride, remember, Jim, use a hot pad. Oh, always. Well, did you have Vaseline petroleum jelly in the house? And you applied it right away, hmm? That's just the thing to do. Oh, your burn will be all healed in a jiffy. <laughs> There's nothing better for minor household burns than Vaseline petroleum jelly. And being a veteran, Jim, you'd be interested in the wartime medical reports I've been reading. Petroleum jelly, as part of a new burn treatment, helped promote remarkable recoveries among burn casualties. Yes, Jim, Vaseline petroleum jelly is the world's leading brand. Well, now, next time either of you happen to get a minor burn, use the same tested aid. Hmm, just spread Vaseline petroleum jelly on fine mesh gauze and place over the burn. Bandage firmly, but not tightly. Of course, if the burn is deep or covers a wide area, always call the doctor. Oh, but be sure you always keep Vaseline petroleum jelly handy. <laughs> Tell the missus hello, Jim. Oh, forget it. <laughs> Goodbye. Now for the play, The Last Awakening. And for those who like chiller dillers, this is it. It's a gloomy Saturday afternoon in River's End. And over at the Excelsior Theater, the movie matinee is just concluding with home-going movie patrons crowding up the aisles. But wait, who's that seated in the very last row? Dr. Christian, wake up. Wake up, it's time to go. Huh? What's that? Time to go. Uh, uh, time to go where, Judy? Time to go home, Dr. Christian. The show's over. The show. Oh, oh, oh you mean it's over. Oh, Dr. Christian, if you're not a fine one. You escort a lady to the theater, and then just when things get exciting and the shooting starts, you fall asleep. Asleep? Why, Judy, I wasn't asleep. I, uh, <laughs> I was just concentrating with my eyes closed. Oh, I see. Well, I don't think you better concentrate quite so hard then, Dr. Christian. Makes you snore. <laughs> All right, I guess I'll have to admit it since you caught me in the act. But uh, it just goes to show what a good patient I am when you play the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad I did drag you here. A movie was just the tonic you needed. This is the first real rest you've had since the flood emergency last week. Yes, old man, we were certainly brought a flood of patients to our door. Ah, uh, it's a relief to know he's holding along smoothly again. Judy. Yes, Dr. Christian? Did you notice all those people down front there? Hmm? They haven't got up yet. They're still sitting in the seats. Why, yes, so they are. It's queer. There's so many of them. Ah, oh, they must be staying for the next show. But it isn't continuous, Dr. Christian. There won't be another show until tonight. Not until tonight? No. Well, what can they be waiting for? We can't be sure from here, but I think... You think what, Judy? I think they're all asleep. Say, I think you're right. <laughs> yes, they are asleep. Look, there's old Lou Gellis down the first row. Completely relaxed and out of this world. Luke Ellis? Well, he was at your office only this morning, complaining about his insomnia. Said he hadn't had a wink of sleep for days. That just goes to show you the therapeutic powers of the theater. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll go down and wake him up and congratulate him on his dramatic cure. But I don't like it, Dr. Christian. The way they're all slumped over in their seats. So still. Watch him now. Time to get up, Luke. Show's over. Hey, it's time to go home. He doesn't move, Dr. Christian. Oh, he will this time. It's morning, Luke. Time to get up and, uh, and take your sleeping tablets. Oh, oh, oh. Dr. Christian, he's fallen to the floor. Yes, Judy, quick. 
Open his collar and wrap his hands no. while I put my coat onto his head. But he doesn't wake up. No, and I... I don't think he will. You don't mean he's... No, Judy, he's not dead, thank heavens. But didn't you notice something else? Something strange? What, Dr. Christian? When I shouted at Luke, didn't you notice? All these people here, none of them woke up either. tired. What a nightmare. Every bed in the hospital is full, laying the patients out on the floor on blankets. What is this mysterious, insidious thing that's striking them down? Oh, well, I think I'll turn on the radio just to get my mind off of it. Of such vital importance to all our Rivers End listeners that we urge you to pay careful attention to the following message. A mysterious epidemic of sleeping sickness has just broken out in the town of River's End, scene of last week's heavy flood. It has been reported that several hundred people have already contracted this mystery malady, the first symptom of which is a strange and profound sleep from which the victim cannot be aroused. The outbreak was first reported early this evening when 84 patrons of the local movie theater were discovered asleep in their seats at the close of the matinee. Now the strange and so far unidentified sickness is spreading rapidly. People are falling asleep by the score, at home, at work, and on the streets. All available medical aid is being rushed to the scene, and a thorough probe of the alarming situation is being undertaken under the personal direction of the famous Dr. Christian. Your River's End station will continue to bring you further reports on this mysterious epidemic as soon as they're complete. Oh, Dr. Christian, what are we going to do? Are you sure this couldn't be some new, hitherto unknown form of sleeping sickness? Oh, but Judy, that's just the point. These people aren't sick, they're just asleep. Just asleep? What do you mean? Simply this. Now, uh, look at the chart of this young girl I've just been examining. Notice how the pulse, respiration and blood pressure are entirely normal. The circulation and heart action regular. There's absolutely no indication of any toxic or pathological subcondition. But, Dr. Christian, it, it can't be a natural sleep. No, it can't be. Well, we should have been able to arouse them. It's just as though they were in some sort of trance, a state of mass hypnosis. Mass hypnosis? Yes, Judy. A condition beyond the scope of any practical medical diagnosis. <sighs> Professor Grames, the doctor of oriental psychology up at State College, spoke over the radio tonight about what's happened here. And I heard part of what he said. In his opinion, the people of River's End are bewitched. Bewitched? Yes. He told how he'd seen such things happen before in the Orient. Whole villages put under the spell of some sinister enchantment. The people bewitched, seized suddenly by this, this same strange sleep. I see. <laughs> A most intriguing theory. Well, too bad I'm not up on my witchcraft or voodoo. I might put away my stethoscope and proceed to cast off the spell by counter magic. What if they shouldn't wake up at all, Dr. Christian? What do you mean, Judy? Oh, nothing. I... Only I was just thinking of something else. Something else that Professor Graham said. What? Oh, I know it's mad, but he predicted that if his theory were right, the people of River's End might not wake up for years. <laughs> Christian, as mayor of this town, I demand action and at once. Well, we're doing everything we can, Mayor Andrews. Well, it isn't enough. You've got to do more or River's End will become a ghost town overnight. Business has become a complete standstill. Every factory and industry in town is shut down and the people are huddling in their homes watching each other to see who falls asleep next. I know all that and we'll get control of this thing in the end. In the end? Do you realize there's an election coming up in three days? Oh, so that's it. A fine fiasco that will be. Huh. After the way I've campaigned. What chance have I got of being re-elected if there's nobody left to wake on election day to go to the polls? Hmm. Well, perhaps your campaign speeches had something to do with it, Mayor. Dr. Christian, are you sure that this epidemic hasn't got something to do with the flood? 
I've been fearing all along that some outbreak like this might occur. You mean the possibility of flood pollution? Uh, yes, Dr. Christian. Maybe the uh, bacterium germ thing or whatever it is that's causing all this came from the water. I thought of that, Mayor Andrews, first thing. That's why I sent water samples to the state pathologist this afternoon. Uh, as to a porter, I've just received on his analysis. Hmm. A lot of Syracuse and figures. Most impressive. But, uh, what does it mean? Uh, what I'd like to know is, did we he find anything in the water? No, Mayor Andrews. Oh, he did make a note, though, that the water contained a surprisingly high chlorine content. Well, uh, should have. After all the trouble I went through this morning, chlorinating it myself. You chlorinated it? Yes. The water commissioner is out, and with the whole department understaffed, I had to take over the job myself. Then, to make matters worse, the chlorine ran low, and it took me half the forenoon to get through a fresh supply from the sanitation department. Well, it must be quite an emergency when even the mayor has to pitch in and work. Work? Hmm. I was down to the waterworks for three hours this morning, pouring chlorine into the mixing tanks. Well, you certainly did a thorough job of it, from the taste. Judy and I just can't drink it. Are you sure you knew what you were doing? Knew what I was doing? Huh. Dr. Christian, I might remind you that I was water commissioner of this town for seven years. Yes, I know, but in those days, Riversend got his water supply from the old oaken bucket. Uh, I'll answer it, Dr. Christian. You keep right on with your work. I'm expecting a call from the uh, <clears throat> governor, and this may be it. Very well, Mayor. <clears throat> Hello? Yes? Yes, this is Mayor Andrews speaking. What? What did you say? <clears throat> the whole town. No, no, you can't mean that. Just now? From the uh, um, state capitol? Are you sure? Well, they can't do it. We're not dead. Yet. <clears throat> I'll be right down. And while I'm coming, clear a line through to Washington. Um, to the White House. Yes, yes, uh, a person-to-person -person call. To the uh, president. Well, Dr. Christian, they've done it. Done what? Quarantined us. The whole town of Rivers End has just been put under airtight quarantine. Quarantine? Yes, they've got armed troops posted on every road. And no one will be permitted to enter or leave Rivers End under any circumstances. But, Mayor Andrews, they can't do that. We'll be isolated. We've got to have supplies from the outside, necessities, food and medicine. I know, Dr. Christian. And we'll probably get them as long as there's any of us left awake to pick them up. They just promised they'd send us everything we need by parachute. Dr. Christian, I wish we hadn't left the hospital. Oh, now, Judy, we've got to have a little air on relaxation. Just as though we'd been suddenly transported to some ancient and plague-ridden metropolis of the past, where the people had all died. I know, Judy. Let's give you a queer sort of feeling inside, just as if we were the last two people left on Earth. Oh, but, Dr. Christian, what if all those awful things the commentators are saying on the radio are true? What if the last day has come, and this is the end of the world? Oh, Judy, come to your senses. Remember, you're a nurse, not a neurotic. We're not quite out of this world yet. Look, there comes a police car. Dr. Christian, get in here. Quick, I've been looking for you everywhere. You've got to get back to the hospital right away. The hospital? Why, what happened, Mayo? What's the matter? What's the matter? Man alive, don't you know? The place is a madhouse. All those people, they're beginning to wake up. <laughs> Uh, Judy, you see that every patient gets plenty of strong black coffee as soon as he comes to. Yes. And report to me immediately uh, after any change in their condition. I will, Dr. Christian, right away. Well, Dr. Christian, have you finally found out what it's all about? What put all those people to sleep and what woke them up again so suddenly? No, Mayor, it's still a mystery. I'll say it is. Hmm. Whole town passes out on its feet and nobody can discover any logical reason why. I feel sure I could solve it. If I could only discover one clue. Maybe they were drugged. 
I thought of that. But all our tests for the usual sleep-producing agents revealed nothing. No, it doesn't make sense anyway. No one could have got at whatever all those people drank at home and given them knockout drops. The idea just doesn't hold water. Knockout drops? Hold water? May I, Andrews? That's the clue I've been looking for. Of course, that must be it. Oh, why didn't I think of it before? That's the only way it could have happened to so many people. Dr. Christian, what are you talking about? Now, you'll find out, Your Honor, soon enough. But get your hat now while I call duty. We are going to the waterworks. The waterworks? Dr. Christian, do you know what you're saying? What has the waterworks got to do with all this? <laughs> everything, Mayor Andrews, everything. That's where we are going to solve our mystery. To decipher the strange riddle of the sleeping people of River's End. And, Mayor, as the town's first citizen, you'd better prepare yourself for a shock. A shock? Yes, Mayor. Because if my deductions prove correct, it was you yourself who put the people of River Sand to sleep. Mayor Andrews, I don't understand it. What's happened? Why has Dr. Christian brought us out here to the waterworks? Judy, I hate to say this to you, but I don't think that Dr. Christian is in his right mind. Dr. Christian, not in his right mind. No, Judy, and it's not surprising. After the strain he's been under these past few days, the added responsibilities of the flood and then this sleeping thing. I uh, think that with the overwork and all, he's begun to crack at last. Mayor Andrews, do you realize what you're saying? Yes, Judy, I do. I didn't want to be the one to tell you, but back there in the hospital, Dr. Christian accused me. Me, the mayor of River's End, of putting all those people to sleep. Oh, Mayor Andrews, you must have misunderstood this. No, Judy, I'm afraid not. That's why he's brought us out here to the waterworks. You see, Judy, he's under the delusion that I put poison or some drug in the public water supply. Oh, no. I know it sounds incredible, Judy, but just look what he's doing now. Look what he's doing. Peering down into the mixing tanks, testing and fingering all those valves. Look at the strange smile on his face. It isn't a strange smile. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you, Judy. But we must face it. Be realistic. His mind is gone. It has not, Mayor Andrews. I bet there is something in those tanks that Dr. Christian thinks there is. Poison or something. And how do I know that you're not mad? After all, I heard you tell Dr. Christian that you were down here at the waterworks yesterday morning chlorinating the water supply. Yes, yes, I was. Doing my best to safeguard the health and welfare of my people, <clears throat> my constituents. Oh. And I can assure you, Jury, it wasn't an easy job for a man of my age, pouring all those heavy cylinders of chlorine into the mixing tanks. Seven full cylinders of the stuff. Yes, Mayor Andrews, enough stuff hmm? to kill off the whole population of River's End. Why, with the way you had those control valves set... <laughs> Seven full cylinders of chlorine would have made a little solution strong enough to poison every person in town. Oh, no! Poison? Dr. Christian, you don't mean that all those people... Oh, now, Mayor, don't get excited. Your constituents are not going to die without voting. Just so happened, luckily, that those seven cylinders didn't contain chlorine. What? But, Dr. Christian, there must be some mistake. Yes, Mayor, there certainly was. And you're the one who made it. But, Dr. Christian, those cylinders came from our own sanitation department. I told you before how the chlorine supply ran short this morning, and I had a truck rush them over. I know, Mayor. And in the rush, both you and the sanitation department must have neglected to notice that those seven cylinders were marked chloral. Chloral? Chloral? Why, Dr. Christian, chloral is a disinfectant. Yes, Judy, a most efficient disinfectant. And germicide. But chloral, what has that got to do with what happened last night? May I answer you put River Sand to sleep with magic solution, which you accidentally concocted in the mixing tanks by your incorrect manipulation of the control valves. What? What? Good gracious. Now I've knocked the May out. If you don't explain so that I can understand, I'll, well, I'll die of suspense. What did Mayor Andrews do to the water? And how is he, by the way? <laughs> the mayor is all right, but uh, slightly so green to 
uh, have given knockout drops to his own constituents. Oh, what do you mean, knockout drops? Well, Mayor Andrews put chloral in the water supply by mistake, thinking it was chlorine. Chloral and water make uh, chloral hydrate, and uh, that's an effective sleeping drug. Oh, but why didn't the state pathologist detect it when he analyzed the water? Well, chloral hydrate is a simple chlorine derivative. So it's no wonder they failed to isolate it in their analysis. Huh. But why couldn't you tell what had struck all the people? Oh, because the sleep induced by chloral hydrate can hardly be distinguished from natural sleep, except by the most exacting tests. But, Doctor, uh, one more question, then I'm, I'm going to go home and sleep the whole thing off. <laughs> yes, Judy, what is it? Oh, why didn't the chloral hydrate in the town water supply affect the mayor himself? Oh, you forget that Mayor Andos lives out on the river road and has his own water supply. Oh, that's so. But what about you and me? Oh, now, Judy, if the mayor's knockout drops had affected you and me, there wouldn't have been any story. And the curtain descends on another Dr. Christian Prize play with our star, Gene Herschel, waiting to greet you. Man, are you bothered by dry scalp? If you have dry, unruly hair, if loose dandruff begins to appear, if your scalp is tight and itchy, remember these are signs of dry scalp. Start using Vaseline hair tonic today. Combat dry scalp. Check it easily, quickly, effectively. Vaseline hair tonic actually supplements natural scalp oils. Contains no alcohol or other drying ingredients. Just five drops a day applied with comb or directly on the hair checks dry scalp. Tame stubborn hair keeps it perfectly groomed. Also, a brisk Vaseline hair tonic massage before each shampoo loosens dandruff, stops itchy tightness. Vaseline hair tonic gives double care, both scalp and hair. Checks dry scalp, leaves your hair neat, natural looking, attractive. Remember, more bottles of Vaseline hair tonic are sold today than of any other hair tonic in America. Buy, try Vaseline hair tonic. Vaseline Hair Tonic is one of the many Vaseline brand products made by the Cheesebro Manufacturing Company, owners of the trademark Vaseline. And now here is Gene Herschel. Thank you very much. I'm especially happy to talk to you tonight because it's our birthday. Yes, exactly eight years ago today, on November 7th, 1937, the Dr. Christian program had its premiere for our same sponsor, the makers of Vaseline brand products. Tonight's story was the 363rd drama presented in this series. Our scripts are contributed by our audience and since they are written by the people, they give a true and absorbing picture of current American life. It's a pleasure and a privilege to play in them. Our grateful thanks go to all the fine artists who've uh, played with us through the years, and especially to screen actress Rosemary the Camp, the beloved Judy Price of this series. Rosemary. Oh, thank you, Jean. Makes me tremendously happy to play on the Dr. Christian program. I adore the character of Judy. It's so wonderful to work with Jean Herschel as Dr. Christian. And my pride is busting out all over that we're starting our ninth year on the air. Let us not forget also that this week is Radio's 25th anniversary, and the industry, the sponsors, and the artists are equally deserving of our appreciation for the tremendous job they've done in that time. Our next week, our prize play is The Long Lane by Rebecca M. Bennett of Indianapolis, Indiana. We invite you all to hear the Vaseline program next Wednesday evening, same time, same station. And until then, I'll say... Good night. So you've got chapped lips? Then get Vaseline Lip Eyes. Healing begins almost instantly. Only 10 and 25 cents. For quick relief, quick healing, ask your druggist for Vaseline Lip Ice. Don't fail to hear next week's Dr. Christian Prize play, The Long Lane. It's a story you won't want to miss. Bob Anderson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.